Here we go again, you guys. No surprise here. You know, this is a constant changing battlefield, and every time I think I haven't figured out, I realize I don't. And what I mean by that is, sometimes alliances that have lasted for decades fall apart in instances. If you want to look at Garo Quintero's alliance with Mao and Chapo, for example, who protected basically his people and his family while Garo Quintero was in jail some 28 years, fell apart instantly when he got out and made this alliance with Mencho, and that's what we're going to address right here. You see, the Sedena was hacked, for those of you who don't know, by, I think it's called Operation Wakamaya. Now, a lot of this information is still being filtered through because there's millions of documents. But one of the more interesting things that has come to light is this alliance. You could call it the Alliance of the Access of Evil, if you want the truth, just because who's involved and how it, you know, how it affects Mexico as a whole. So, we have Chapo Isidro, right? And then on top of that, we have Mencho. And Chapo Isidro has assumed lots of control to the Beltran Label Organization, according to the Sedena. Now, on top of Chapo Isidro and Mencho, of course, we have Garo Quintero, who made his alliance with Mencho, which means these three very large organizations have formed somewhat of an alliance, like I said, an axis of evil, to confront the cartel of Sinaloa. And... This much betters Mencho's chance of controlling all of Mexico if his organization can go without betraying Chapo Isidro like he has every other organization. And Chapo Isidro has actually gained lots of strength in the last, you know, two or three years. We've seen huge mobilization of caravans and confrontations of him taking terrain. Now, the Beltran Label Organization as well has been in the background for a long time, but they're still working and, and operating, believe you me. And their alliance with Mencho also strengthens his organization big time. This is more terrain for him to, what would you say, network, as well as cause more problems for Sinaloa, whose traditional you know, enemy is the Beltran Leva cartel, due to the fact they blame Chapo for betraying and giving information to the United States government that led to the arrest of what at the time was the leader of their organization. Now, what does this mean as a whole? You know, if this alliance holds, this is going to be probably the biggest problem the Sinaloa cartel has had to confront. And the fact the Mexican government knows about this, it's obvious what they're doing here is they're playing both sides. You see, if to a certain extent they back up Mencho and his organization and simultaneously do the same with Sinaloa, Either way, whatever sides wins, they win, if that makes sense, because they're playing both sides of the field. You know, this is proven just due to the amount of information they have in general on these groups, who's allied with who. And, of course, the back deal, you know, deals that are made between the Mexican government and these groups as far as plazas and areas of control. You know, there was an original agreement between the Sinaloa cartel and the government, for example, to stop leaving bodies, you know, to lower the body account and what people are seeing in public as far as taking their own dead. And these type of agreements, you know, are terrifying because there's open cooperation and they're working together at the same time and simultaneously supposedly fighting them. It almost looks like everything's a show if you guys want the truth when it comes to government operations and things of that degree. We know usually when the arrest, it's people that the organization no longer wants or they themselves give up. You could look at this in a lower cartel constantly, you know, gives up people and makes deals with the government. Sometimes they'll send people to kill someone and give, give, then give the killers up, even to other criminal organizations. And if you guys would like a perfect example of that, you know, you could look at Chapo sent several times killers to get rid of people and later sell them to the exact people he sent to kill. That was kind of a, a common practice due to the fact that these rival organizations lots of the time would put up rewards for the people that were responsible for killing their loved ones or members and the same organization that sent them will give them up. That's just to give you a taste of how brutal and you know disposable everyone is in these organizations. And this alliance that has been made by these three groups is going to bring the death toll up skyrocketing. 
especially if they were to simultaneously pressure the Sinaloa cartel, which is what I expect in the near future. You know, this alliance isn't for no reason. When they do simultaneously attack the Sinaloa cartel, it's going to be brutal due to the fact Chapo Isidro is actually in Sinaloa, and they're not fighting in an outside state. Which is why, you know, Operativa Meseta has been so crucial because Mayo's fighting Mencho off in Zacatecas to try to keep him out of the Golden Triangle, which at the end of the day is, you know, the Sinaloa cartel's source of revenue for a large part of what they do. And it's not just growing crops anymore with poppies or anything like that. A lot of it has to do now with fentanyl laboratories and amphetamine laboratories. In a lot of these communities are so remote, we have to remember that it is perfect for them to have operations like that, and that's why I can't afford to lose it. It would be impossible, if not very close to it, to replace as a source of revenue if the Golden Triangle goes, the Sinaloa Cartel goes with it. And Mencho knows that, and I'm sure that's what this alliance is going to try to pressure principally, is their money. You know, you take out their money, you take out the cartel. And the Sinaloa Cartel has plenty of allies as well, we have to remember. But due to infighting inside their own organization, if you want to look like what happened with Pancho Huerta the other day, or El Ere in Durango, there's been lots of killings by the Chapitos against Miles people, for example, and it, it highlights the tension that's still going on. And due to this, they can't successfully counter Mencho or this new alliance that's been formed if they're still infighting. Let's be honest. What are they going to be able to do? It completely takes out, you know, any of their abilities to be effective against Mencho and this is something that's been going on a while they've made truces for those of you who know but it's hard for people to let the past live be you know for example El Bente who was betrayed by the Salazaras I've talked about that many times who had to run the Baja California to later come back to Sonora and killing a lot of Salazaras porque the Salazaras killed a lot of his men and still you know they were the ones that were responsible for Pancho Huerta's death at the end of the day so this alliance is basically a nightmare for the Sinaloa cartel. Basically, all their enemies that have pressured them, and then the wild card that has been the Chapo Isidro, formed an alliance that can actually threaten their dominance in Mexico as a whole. It all depends on how much cooperation these organizations are willing to put in between each other and how much they're willing to sacrifice to get rid of the Sinaloa cartel. You know, Mencho as a whole has been fighting on so many fronts. Like I've said before, if he would have just picked one organization at a time and gone knocking them off, he could have taken control of Mexico in probably a year, a little bit more. But due to the fact he decided to simultaneously fight everyone, that's why he's in the stalemate in the situation he's in in places like Guanajuato, where they're just small cartels, for example. You know, you could look at Cartel Santa Rosa de Lima, but he hasn't been able to push him out and this alliance could change all that this could break that steel mate is what I'm trying to say that's why it's so important and it wouldn't surprise me at all to see that happen you know this for a while has been going in favor of Sinaloa due to ground being taken as well as ground being able to be held but it's not like they're winning by a great margin right they've been able to even go into Jalisco and we have to remember Mayo even had a cartel inside Jalisco Cartel Nuevo Plaza which was Mencho's lieutenant that turned on him so there's been lots of pressure on Jalisco in their home state is what I'm trying to get at and that hasn't happened to Sinaloa as far as threat Sinaloa being threatened their home state but all this could change due to mainly the fact Chapo Isidro he's already in Sinaloa so it gives Mencho a place to launch attacks directly on Sinaloa from their home state it could greatly, you know, threaten the stability of them being able to operate in their home state. They'd actually have to probably send a lot of the men that are in Apatimo, MZ, and other places to fight Chapo Isidro. And Sinaloa has plenty of men, plenty of sicarios, but they're also very well stretched due to the conflict, you know, with Mencho. Of course they are. And if that were to happen, that would be Mencho's dream because he'd be able to clean out Zacatecas very quickly and start pressuring Durango which would be the next step of course after Zacatecas due to where it's located and there's that entrance into the Golden Triangle I've previously stated you know either way this means a lot more death for the civilians they're the ones who always get caught in the crossfires and as families are no longer respected you know every time they get a narco his family usually goes along with them or friends so on and so forth and it's a lot of innocent people, and as that's what this channel focuses on, unfortunately, we all know this alliance is going to cause a lot more deaths of innocence. 
and as long as this conflict is going, we're going to constantly see that. So let me know what you guys think about this alliance. Do you think it is going to be a game changer or do you think it's just another day in Mexico? Either way, I appreciate you guys' time for watching. Consider becoming a member as well as Patreon, getting to see videos like this before anyone else. And I wish each and every one of you a good morning, night, evening, wherever you are in the world, my friends. Crazy developments, and we're going to keep seeing more information released from this hack that was done on the Mexican military. Exposing a lot of evil. Adios, amigos.